If you have a budget of 150,000 ringgit, you can go for an entry level Honda CRV Turbo, a high spec Mazda CX 5 2 liter, or even a Subaru BRZ slash Toyota 86 from the used car market. But some people are crazy enough to spend the same amount of money on a Toyota CHR. It's nowhere near as practical as a CRV, not half as premium as a CX-5, nor is it a sports car. So today, I'm going to find out what's so appealing about a CHR and tell you whether is it worth your 150,000 ringgit. Log on to webcar.my for the latest reviews, comparisons, and car prices to help you find your perfect car. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button. On paper, 150,000 ringgit for a CHR doesn't make any sense. Yes, it's fully imported from Thailand, but still, halogen projector headlamps, bulb type tail lamps, and a 1.8 litre CVT under the hood. And on the inside, it's even more underwhelming. When the CHR first came out in 2017, the interior had a bit of a wow factor. How the cabin is angled towards the driver is very sporty. There are also some diamond style elements on the roof and the side door bins, which ties into the CHR's design concept, which is modeled after a diamond. It's a Toyota that doesn't look like a Toyota. But having experienced the Mazda CX-30 and Subaru XV, I feel that the material quality used in the CHR is not up to competition. There are hard plastics all around, and the leather just doesn't feel as plush as a 150,000 car should feel. UNW Toyota has clocked back some brownie points with the updated 2019 CHR. It now features new multi-spoke dual-tone alloys, although still measuring 17 inches in diameter, I feel it looks a lot sharper compared to the 5-spoke silver ones from before. There's also new silver bits around the front bumper, side underbody, as well as rear reflectors. And on the inside, it now features a new touchscreen infotainment system that supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Although the 6.75-inch screen means that you still get a thick bezel around the infotainment. This particular unit is fitted with the optional TRD Sportivo Aero Kit that adds a more aggressive front splitter and rear diffuser. But the CHR's worth is not on its specs nor features. What you're paying for is under the skin. The CHR is the first Toyota model to ride on the Toyota New Global Architecture Platform, shortened for TNGA Platform. It's said to give you a car that's safe, connected, and exciting to drive. Not just fun, but exciting to drive. The platform is ready for electrification and full suite of ADAS, although this CHR only comes with blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. The TNGA platform is highly sophisticated. It's used on the new Toyota Camry, the new Corolla Altis, even some newer Lexus models also uses a variation of the TNGA platform. But the best part about the TNGA platform is the adoption of double wishbone suspensions at the rear axles. Now, double wishbones offers better lateral stability and body control, qualities that are evident in the CHR. Road holding capabilities is more akin to a low riding hatchback rather than an SUV. If you enter a corner, hard and hot, the rear just glues itself to the tarmac following the front of the car in one fluid motion. For a car that handles this well, you might expect that some sacrifices will be made in terms of ride comfort. Case in point, Mazda's. But no, Toyota is the king when it comes to suspension balance. Road pliancy is as good as a comfort-oriented SUV, but man does it handle like a warm hatch. It's absolutely superb. Manufacturers have moved away from double wishbone suspensions because it's more expensive to make, maintain, and eats up precious interior space. But Toyota figured, in the name of absolute driving excitement, they think it's a worthwhile thing to do. And boy, am I glad that they have. Engine performance is also one area that keyboard warriors just keeps on bashing about. But my question to them is, if not this 1.8 liter CVT, what else? The 1.2 liter turbo is not the kind of turbo that you expect, making whoosh and pops and bangs, all the fun stuff. No, it's geared primarily for efficiency. Yes, it makes 185 Nm of torque, but it only makes a measly 116 PS. 
a Mazda 2 1.5 makes 115 PS to put things into perspective. Then there are the hybrid options, which without government incentives would jack up the selling price of the CHR to astronomical amounts. Seriously, would you want to pay even more for a CHR? That leaves us with this 2ZR FBE 1.8 litre naturally aspirated 4 cylinder petrol engine with dual VVTi. It makes 141 PS and 171 newton meters of torque paired to a CVT automatic. Those numbers doesn't sound too appetizing on paper, but when translated onto the road, it's more than sufficient. The power delivery is linear and the low end torque is seriously impressive. This CVT is also one of the best in the business with minimal rubber band effect. It makes driving in the city and on a highway a joy. The smooth powertrain complements the chassis balance and braking performance really well. Just like the ethos of the Toyota 86, you don't need a lot of power to have a lot of fun. Although I find it weird that you have to cycle through the MID display to change the drive mode settings into sport, normal or eco. You know, a Vios and Yaris, they have like a physical button right on the dashboard. If you're a driving enthusiast but your missus wants you to sell off their Toyota 86 for an SUV, but you don't want to give up the pleasure of driving just yet, here are some reasons you can use to convince your missus that the CHR is a worthy replacement. For starters, you have convenience features such as keyless entry, push start button, auto down and up for all four windows, automatic dual zone climate control, two USB charging ports so you don't have to fight, electronic parking brake with auto hold, great for traffic jams, manual front seats so there are less electronics to worry about. And in the rear, there's plenty of space in the footwell, just enough of space for a 175cm tall adult like myself. Fitting a child seat in here is completely possible with a bit of a wiggle from the narrow door apertures. And this high window line? No, it's not claustrophobic. It's for privacy. But whatever you do, don't let your missus know that there are no grab handles, no rear air vents, nor a center armrest in the rear. Yeah, just keep it to yourself. The tailgate opens up to 377 litres of boot space, which is pretty alright given its coupe-like styling. You can easily fit a mid-size suitcase, and a baby stroller can go right next to it. Although, maybe consider a more compact baby stroller? It may not be the most practical one out there, but it's definitely more practical than an 86. The CHR cannot be understood based on spec sheets alone. Even if you sat in one in a showroom, it still wouldn't be enough to convince you that it's worth your 150,000 ringgit. But give it a chance, have a go in it, convince your salesman to let you drive it for a bit longer, a bit further, then you understand what the CHR is made for. It's a Toyota that you want to get in and drive it, one that makes you feel good driving it at that. Packaged in an SUV body, it's also convincing enough that it's a viable family car. Its asking price is expensive as heck, but those who understand it, thinks it's worth every penny. Those who don't, can only laugh at those who do. Would I buy one? My heart says yes, but my calculative mind thinks otherwise. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. Leave us a comment down below, what do you think about the new Toyota CHR?